What is up guys, welcome back to Cloud Space with Siba. My name is Siba and I will be really taking us through a powerful tool that I recently came across, which is Valero. Um, a bit of context, so the team and I are actually preparing to do an upgrade of our EKS cluster. And as part of our plan, what we were looking for is to first back up everything that we have in the cluster um, before we actually do that so that whatever then happens, we are able to easily and automatically, if possible, restore ourselves back to our previous state. And that's when I came across this tool called Valero. Um, and I thought it would be very um, helpful to share this with as many um, people who might be in the process of something similar uh, to this. So um, that's what we're going to be doing in this in this particular series. It's going to be a series where I do it over a couple of videos because there are many parts to um, to cover. And I think it just makes sense to just break it down into those small, minute parts um, as possible. Now, um, having said that, in this video, we're going to really focus on the architecture, um, how this thing works and what it actually does in terms of how it can benefit us. Please do not forget to subscribe, do not forget to like, and do not forget to share because obviously this is how this information then is spread to as many um, individuals um, as possible who may need this. So anyways, let's come back to um to to the tool itself, right? So what is Valero? Valero is, is an open source tool, right? Meaning it's available freely. And the reason it exists really is to help us safely backup as well as restore um, Kubernetes cluster resources as well as persistent volumes. Now, Kubernetes could be, you could be running your Kubernetes cluster in a number of environments. You could be doing on bare, on bare metal, you could be doing on it on the cloud, meaning you, you, you're you running it in EKS or uh, GKE, I believe, or... AKE, I believe. I don't know. I don't know what Azure calls it, but I work with EK, uh, with EKS. So you could be running your Kubernetes in those sorts of environments. And what this tool does is that it takes your Kubernetes cluster resources and it backs them up to a storage location that you have selected, and as well as your persistent volumes. Now, when it comes to persistent volumes, as we've seen in the architecture section, is that it takes snapshots. Um, of your volumes and stores them again in a location so that whenever you then need to restore all of that you are able to do so easily now it's very powerful because then it allows us to do a couple of things right number one in the case of a disaster we can be able to reduce the time to recover um, our, our environment or the state of our environment simply because we can simply restore um, our workloads as well as the volumes. The other thing is that it can help us with data migration. So imagine a scenario where we have this current cluster and we you know, opt to have a new cluster altogether. What we can do is that between the two clusters, we can migrate our data from the old cluster to the new cluster. And I think that's very, very powerful. The other thing, of course, is that we can do data protection um, in that we can retain, obviously, our data um, at at intervals, right? So it's very powerful. Um, other features, obviously, we've mentioned the fact that you can backup clusters um, and the fact that you can do scheduled backups. And I think this is very important because um, as you'll see in the demonstration, what we'll do is we'll do a manual backup and a restore job. You don't want to do that. Um, it's not the... It's not the best way to do it. What you want to do is to kind of have scheduled backups where it'll kick off backups um, at, at recurring intervals. And I think that's very powerful because then what it does is that it enables you to know um, or gives you the assurance that you are close to um, the most uh, the most current state of your, of your workloads essentially, right? Um, and then lastly is that you can do backup hooks where you can do certain things before you do a backup or you can do certain things after um, a backup is kicked off. Right? So let's look at the architecture. Um, in terms of the architecture, if we come to the diagram over here, we see a, a, a basically a workflow how this thing happens. right? So Valero talks to the Kubernetes API. It doesn't talk to anything else, it just talks to that. So what happens is that you on your end will um, run a command, Valero, you know, create backup, and that will be sent um, to the Kubernetes API. Now, in the form of events, what we have in the cluster when we deploy Valero is that it, it, it deploys this uh, backup controller. 
right? So Kubernetes controllers, there's many various um, forms of this. There's Git controllers, you know, there's um, node controllers and also all sorts of things. But one of those is going to be a backup controller that's deployed by Valero. <coughs> Excuse me. And what that backup controller is really going to be doing, it's paying attention. It's paying attention to events that are related um, to backups, restores, and scheduled backups. And when it does, right, it qu then queries the Kubernetes API for the objects that we want to backup. Once it gets those, what's re what's returned to it as a response is all of the configuration around you know the object so it could be for example a pod it'll get the configuration for that pod um, and then what it'll do is it'll upload all of that to some cloud provider storage that we have. It could be in this case, and how it works with EKS is that it'll put it in an S3 bucket. The same thing with um, with 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 volumes, right? And this is what I wanted to talk about is that um, with with volumes, it doesn't copy the volume, right? What it does is that it takes us it it uses your API, the cloud provider's API. Um, to then do a snapshot, and you'll see this in 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 the Terraform module, especially in the IM uh, policies. When we give it that, you'll notice that it it has permissions to create um, essentially snapshots, and those snapshots will be kept. Then, when we want to do a restore, it'll obviously then um, volumes will then be be provisioned based on those on the snapshots. So, yeah, that's is the that's essentially the. The architecture of this thing right so we interact with the kube api the controller is listening to events it queries kubernetes uh, api for the uh, objects that we need to restore obviously kubernetes talk to etcd uh, where essentially which is essentially the the data store for our entire for the entire state of our cluster it gets a response from that it sends that back to the controller the controller gets the configuration and puts that into an s3 bucket um, and then for volumes, it then uses the API to then create snapshots um, for our persistent volumes, right? So I hope that's very helpful. That's in fact, the only thing that we'll do in this particular video. In the next video, we're gonna then look at the file structure um, of our Terraform module. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, s and then we'll start working on creating this, um, this Terraform module. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to like, and please don't forget to share as well as hit the notification bell so that you get notifications for the videos I do create. Thank you so much for watching.